Welcome to the Revenge Story Times channel. I looked down the street toward the main road. Real estate signs decorated the immaculate lawns of homes, and in the other direction, there were two more. Oh God, this could hurt property values, I thought. When the next two houses go up for sale, it's going to get even worse. My attention was drawn to a house three doors down on the opposite side of the street. That's where Gary and Jessica Spencer live. They're probably the youngest couple in the neighborhood, he's a financial consultant, and she's a management consultant. I would describe them both as yuppies, meaning young, upwardly mobile professionals. Gary works from home, and Jessica often travels for business. I noticed some movement at the Spencers. I grabbed my binoculars and took a closer look. She was pulling the curtains in the bedroom. She looked good standing there in her underwear, for her age, she still had a great body. She picked up her clothes, and then I saw him walk through the room into the bathroom. What does she see in him? I asked myself. He's not that tall, and his body looks flabby. She stepped over to her skirt, then picked up a white blouse and slipped her arms into it. She was still buttoning the blouse as she left the room. Gary came out of the bathroom in just his boxer shorts. I watched him buckle his belt over his jeans, not bothering to put on a shirt, and noticed his man boobs bouncing as he followed her out of the room. And now what? I wondered. Are they going to sit and chat over a glass of wine or maybe a cup of coffee? Or will he get straight to business? I waited another 15 minutes before there was any movement. The side gate opened, and she walked out. I couldn't see him, but she turned and kissed someone as she walked down the street. She turned and waved before crossing the road. My wife was coming home. The sound of my boots echoed through the house as I hurried down the stairs and went outside to take a seat in the conservatory. The side gate opened, and I heard the click of her heels as she walked along the concrete path. As she opened the door, she smiled, and I tried to catch the tune she was humming as she passed through the archway into the dining room. A lot of houses in this neighborhood are up for sale. I wonder why, I said. I saw her jump when I spoke, her hand rising to rest on her ample chest. She turned and saw me sitting in the wicker chair. Giles, what are you doing here? You nearly gave me a heart attack. Well, I'm happy to see you too, my dear. You know what I mean. Of course, I'm happy to see you, but I didn't expect you back for another two days. What did you just say? I asked. I asked if you happen to know why so many houses in this neighborhood are up for sale. I thought you women were all close friends, and if anyone would know, it'd be you. Actually, I don't. It's strange, but I haven't seen any of the girls since we took Alex to Durham. I was supposed to meet Sally for coffee on Monday morning, but you insisted we stay the night, so I missed it. We haven't been able to catch up since. Well, last Monday I saw Sally and Eric at the pub. I sensed some tension between them. When Eric went to the bathroom, Sally confided in me. Apparently, old Eric had an affair four years ago, and Sally just found out about it. They're trying to work through it, but the other woman lives nearby, and Sally wants to be as far away from her as possible. I noticed the color drain from her face when she heard my news. In my line of work, this happens often. The person you're questioning thinks you don't know anything, but you hint that you know a lot more. Suddenly, they lose their footing, and their mind starts racing, trying to figure out just how much you really know. She froze for a moment, then started twirling her hair around her fingers. Don't you think it's strange, Isabella, that Sally confided in me and not you, her best friend? She shifted uncomfortably. Now that you're home, I should go start dinner, unless you prefer to go out. She moved toward the fridge, then stopped and turned back to look at me. Giles, what are you wearing? I stood up, pulled the top of the leather suit over my shoulders, slipped my arms into the sleeves, and spun around in front of her with my arms outstretched. Do you like it? I thought the colors were particularly fitting, red, white, and blue. The queen, the country, and all that. It looks ridiculous. A man your age in motorcycle gear. And as for the queen and country, 
It's been 12 years since you left the army and became. She struggled to remember what her husband did all day. A security consultant, dear. I became a security consultant. That's how I make a living, and it's been a pretty good life, hasn't it? I remember. You didn't need to remind me. I just couldn't find the words, that's all. Yes, I think it's been fine. We live here in this house, and we don't need anything. So, I guess you could say we're doing well. I over-delivered on the promise I made to your father, didn't I? I promised to maintain the lifestyle you were accustomed to. I think I did even better than that. But now that I'm retired, you'll probably need to cut back a little. She dropped the oven dish she had just taken out of the cabinet. When a ceramic dish hits a ceramic tile floor, neither one comes out of it feeling particularly good. Isabella, you really need to be more careful. The dish is easy to replace, but who knows if we'll be able to get more of those tiles. Forget the tiles. You're standing here in motorcycle leathers telling me you're retired. What is this, a midlife crisis? When were you planning on talking to me about it? Well, I wasn't planning to, since I didn't think it concerned you. Just like you apparently thought your affair with Eric didn't concern me. That hit the mark. She stumbled and had to grab part of the kitchen island for support. Almost there, just one more blow. Of course, you know Tom and Helena are getting divorced. I have to say, that caught me off guard. When they moved here three years ago, they seemed like a young dream in love. She nearly whispered, and I had to ask her to repeat it. You don't know why? Sally didn't know for sure. All she could tell me were rumors, and you know how much I hate spreading rumors. She took a stool and sat down. What do the rumors say? Something about Tom having someone on the side, but I wouldn't worry about it. It's just rumors. She was very pale now. Maybe I'll take one more shot before she has to run to the bathroom. You know, it got me thinking. When so many houses are put up for sale at the same time, isn't it interesting to wonder if there's a common thread? We know about two. Can you recall anything that might connect the other two? Excuse me. I need to use the bathroom. She got up and rushed to the downstairs bathroom. It seemed like the perfect time for a cup of coffee. I turned on the coffee maker, enjoying the aroma as it ground the beans and brewed the dark liquid. I was still sipping my coffee when she came out of the bathroom. Her makeup had been washed off, and she now looked her age. She still seemed a bit shaken, but had clearly decided that the best defense was a good offense. I thought you would have changed out of that ridiculous outfit by now. Why would I? I'll be needing it again soon. Does that come with a motorcycle too? Oh, not just any motorcycle, but a Ducati Panigale. Capable of speeds over 160 miles per hour. Why do you need something like that? The speed limit is 70 everywhere. Oh, I get it. It's to compensate for your other little problem. I've heard men buy power machines when they can't rev up any more themselves. I couldn't help but laugh. Like I said, I'm retiring. I need something to replace the thrill of jumping out of airplanes at 10,000 feet. Oh, come on. You're just a damn consultant. Consultants don't jump out of planes. Well, it's all a matter of semantics. Some prefer to call us mercenaries or soldiers of fortune, but I think security consultant sounds much more respectable. She sat down again, her mouth agape in disbelief. Are you telling me that for the last 12 years, you've been working as a mercenary? Why didn't I know? Because you weren't interested. You didn't want to know. Do you really think some office worker spends three to four months in African countries? I told you I work with governments. That means training, restructuring their armies, and yes, engaging in combat. War is privatized, my dear. Whenever a government wants to get dirty work done without the blowback, they turn to people like me. Did you never wonder how a consultant ended up with some of my injuries? You said those were accidents. 
And they were. You don't think I got them on purpose, do you? But you broke your leg in Cape Town. You came home on crutches. That's right. It was definitely broken. It just wasn't a car accident. Shrapnel wounds look a lot like the results of a complicated fracture. I watched as she tried to process everything I had just told her, the life she thought was a comfortable little existence. I've been married to a stranger for the last 20 years. Not quite. For the first eight years, I was exactly who you thought I was. The real question is, are you the woman I thought you were? Seems like you're not. Oh, I see. You can't blame me for seeking comfort when I wasn't getting anything from you. I never held your problem against you. I never even brought it up. I'm only human, and I have needs that you haven't fulfilled in a long time. For years, three months, and twenty-three days since the day I left for Cape Town. A look of disbelief crossed her face as she tried to piece it all together. I can't believe you've kept track down to the day. Oh, I get it, one of your injuries. That's what happened in Cape Town, isn't it? Yes, but the news hurt me far more than any physical injury. Do you have any idea what it's like to recover from surgery in a distant country and be told that your wife is sleeping with your neighbor back home? That's not true. Who would tell you that? That's even worse. Our own daughter came home to get her tablet and found you having sex in the bedroom with Eric. The poor child was devastated, crying on the phone, begging me not to break up the family. She stayed with my sister Jenny, who spent the whole night trying to comfort her. You have no idea how lucky you were to be 8,000 miles away from me that night. Jenny called me the next day and asked what I was going to do. I told her I would do whatever my little girl wanted. I don't know exactly when I made the decision, but before I left the hospital, I knew that I would never touch you again, not the way a husband does. She stood in front of me in silence, and I could almost hear the gears turning in her head as she tried to piece everything together. She realized there was one piece of the puzzle missing, the one she couldn't figure out. Why now, Giles? Why are you telling me this now? Like I said, I'm retiring. Well, stepping back from the active part. I'm getting a bit slower, you know, to keep up with the young guys. It's time to tie up loose ends, and you, my dear, are one of them. No. Don't, Giles. I'll stop. I only went to Eric because I was desperate. I wasn't getting anything from you. But we can change. If you retire, we'll see each other much more. So, Gary is just picking up my leftovers. Does that apply to Tom, Greg, and James too? Yes, of course. They were just substitutes. I would have preferred you, but you weren't here. And when you were, you weren't interested. And it never crossed your mind to ask why? I thought you were having issues and didn't want to embarrass you by making you talk about it. How considerate of you, my dear. I'll miss that. What do you mean you'll miss that? We can fix this. We'll go to counseling. I don't understand how we'll do that when you're here and I'm in the south of France. You can't divorce me, Giles. It will ruin you. Oh, I don't think so. But you're right, I can't divorce you. Tell me, what do you remember about our wedding? She stared into my eyes, trying to read what was behind them. We got married on a beach in Bali. That strange little man was mumbling something in their language. The locals put flower garlands around our necks. It was all very romantic, and he gave us a certificate that neither of us could read. He insisted on kissing me, and I giggled because his beard tickled. Do you remember a civil ceremony when we got home? No, of course not. Why would we get married twice? That's exactly what I told the guy from the finance department when they refused to add your name to my pension. I had just returned from Helmand, and they asked me to sort out a few things. For God's sake, Giles, get to the point. The point is, my dear, that we were supposed to have a civil ceremony here. That certificate isn't worth the paper it's written on. I have to admit, my first thought was to talk to you and straighten things out. 
Then I heard rumors about what you were up to with that young subaltern while I was stuck in that hellhole. I put it on the back burner and kind of forgot about it. Legally, it seems we were never married. You're right. I can't divorce you. I don't believe you. This is all just a bluff. You can't just walk away like that. Take it to a lawyer. I'm sure they'll tell you I can do exactly that. Isabella was distracted by a noise outside, and she hurried to the window to look. There's a man hammering something into our lawn. Ah, that's for the real estate agent sign. I called them on my way here when I put the house up for sale. I don't need it anymore. But what about me? What about Alex? I wouldn't worry about Alex. She's planning to spend the holidays with her father. I'll do my best to have her visit you, but the two of you haven't been close for years, have you? No. I won't let you avoid this. I'll go to a lawyer. There must be something I can do. I gave you the best 20 years of my life, and I deserve something. Go ahead. You can try to get what the Americans call palimony support for a cohabitant in an unregistered relationship. But I'm not sure if there's any precedent for that here. You could demand compensation for being a nanny and housekeeper, but when the court sees how much you spend on clothes and jewelry each month, they might decide that you owe me instead. She sank back into the chair, resting her head in her hands. I don't believe this. This isn't happening to me. Do you hate me that much? Hate you? Why would I hate you? You're the mother of my daughter. I can't hate you. Besides, I've managed just fine without you. That got her attention. She lifted her head and looked me in the eye. You mean, for the past four years, you've been? Of course. A soldier always knows where to find fun. Although I must admit, things haven't exactly been the same lately. So you have someone else, and you have the nerve to criticize me? Yes, it's unfair of me, isn't it? Especially since you're the one who brought us together. Sometimes you really are too kind to me. I watched her as she tried to make sense of the events of the day. She stretched her legs out in front of her, hugging them with her arms. She was gently rocking and occasionally shuddering. It seems that while your sensitivity stopped you from talking to me about my little problem, it didn't prevent you from discussing it with your friends. Jessica, in particular, was very sympathetic. She suggested I reach out to some people she thought could help me. I told her I didn't have any problems, but of course, I couldn't expect her to take my word for it. I had to show her, and the demonstration was real. You know, she's quite athletic. You're with Jessica now? I know you're joking. You're nearly twice her age. What could a woman like her possibly see in someone like you? I could ask the same about you and Gary. After all, he still seems to find something attractive in you, at least twice a week. Perhaps I should have apologized for that remark, it was a bit below the belt. She truly had no idea that I knew about it. The hammering outside had stopped. The real estate agent had driven the stake into the ground and was attaching the for sale sign to it. The sound of the hammer was replaced by a lower rumble. Sounds like that's my motorcycle, I said picking up my helmet and heading toward the front door. The motorcycle outside came to a stop in the driveway. The rider, slim but well-built, swung a shapely leg over the seat. As she lifted her helmet, a cascade of red hair fell over her shoulders. A fearsome beast. I can see why it excites you, I said. Isabella followed me outside just in time to see Jessica dismount the bike. Hi, Isabella. Could you do me a favor? Gary isn't feeling very well. You'll look after him for me, won't you? Isabella seemed at a loss for words, so Jessica answered for her. Of course you will. Why not? You've been doing it for so long, you probably won't even notice the difference. I put on my helmet and started the engine. Jess hopped on behind me, and we rode the short distance to the Spencer's house. Gary was arguing with the man setting up the for sale sign when we pulled into the driveway. 
He looked up, confused, when he saw the motorcycle approach, and his confusion only deepened when Jessica climbed off the back. Be nice, Gary, and let the man do his job, she said, slipping her helmet under her arm. I don't understand. What's going on? Maybe this will help, she said, pulling an envelope from her leather jacket and handing it to him. It's a letter from my lawyer, informing you that I'm filing for divorce. You don't have to sell the house, of course. You can always buy me out, though I doubt you have the money for that. Gary just stood there, staring at her, his mouth hanging open. He didn't even open the envelope. Don't worry, dear. Isabella promised to take care of you, so you probably won't even notice I'm gone. He didn't respond. He just turned and slowly walked back toward the house, still holding the envelope in his hand. Be a good boy, Jessica called after him, go back inside and let the man finish putting up the sign. She zipped up her jacket, put her helmet back on, and climbed back onto the motorcycle behind me. We had barely pulled out of the driveway when her voice came through the helmet intercom. How long until we get to Portsmouth? About an hour, I replied. I'm not sure my butt can handle sitting that long. Don't worry. If your butt starts to hurt, I'll massage it all the way to France. And how long is the boat ride? About seven hours. And what will we do to pass the time? I booked a cabin. I felt a playful slap on my shoulder. You're such a naughty boy, and I love you. As we sped down the road, her arms wrapped tighter around my waist, and I could feel her body pressing against my back. In that moment, I knew everything that had happened today had been worth the wait. The rumble of the engine and the feeling of the road beneath us were the only sounds for a while as we made our way out of town. The houses, the past, and everything we were leaving behind slowly faded from view. As we headed toward the next chapter of our lives, I couldn't help but think of how everything had fallen into place. The revenge I hadn't planned, the escape I hadn't expected, and the freedom I now cherished, it was all part of a story that I never imagined would end this way. Thank you for listening until the end, I thought to myself. I smiled as the wind whipped past us, carrying us toward whatever came next. End of the episode. See you in the next one of Revenge Story Times. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Goodbye.